right, let me do some custom research for you. Man, I've been a researcher for 30, 40 years now. You know, I started with me, a phone and a desk in Washington, D.C., researching for Fortune 500 companies, how they can get money to grow their businesses. But man, after about five years of doing that, I got bored. You know, now I wanted to help the average person do that. And I see I've been doing books to do that, but now I see you need the custom research too, because I can't just throw dozens and dozens or hundreds or thousands of, of sources at you and expect you to find the exact one. Yeah, and that's what Google does. They send billions to you, right? You can actually get a billion websites, you know, if you put in certain subjects about starting a business and you'll never find the stuff you want. So let me find the exact ones that match what you want to do in life. And I could do that. I've been doing that so long. You know? <laughs> and so why get, you know, Googleized and, and have a haystack of sources that you'll never find? I'll do the research for you. I'll find the exact programs that will help you, give you free money and help or money at rates you'll never find anywhere else. Man, you could get like, you know, $10,000 from the city, state, federal governments, you know, to start a business at home. Or how about $150,000 just to train yourself or train your employees to start a business or free money to live on while you start your business. See, that's it's not all in one place. You can't call the SBA and find this kind of stuff. No, it's at local offices, it's at county offices, it's stuff you'll never th you know, ever think about. Or how about $50,000 to work you know, on a contract on, on your kitchen table? That's right. If you learn the system, learn where it is, you know, and, and, and how to apply for it, and not, not just some, read some reference book. No, I'll show you the offices to contact. You know, I'll give you the step-by-step -step instructions on how to get this money. I mean, and it, and it could be a part-time business, full-time business, or you're just even thinking about a business. You can get all the free legal help you want. You can get all the free, you know, uh, consulting help or marketing help or publicity help or any of that kind of stuff is free. But see, all those places that I could find, they don't advertise. So you go on Google and find and try to find any of these things. And there are people advertising. They're spending a lot of money trying to find you because they want your money. <laughs> and they'll sell you something that you could get for free. And I'll show you where to get that from for free. Because I think what's happening in our country now people aren't doing the things they want to do in life because they think they cost so much money to do it well no now it costs next to nothing to start your own business start your own idea website that makes money or whatever all the help is for free but you don't know where it is because you know, the people who give out this money for free they don't advertise you know and that's the thing I mean like right now I just read the paper my state is giving out 25 billion dollars for people who want to start businesses just in the states 25 Five million. Yeah, and there's places where you could go and get like a free office space to work on while you think of your business, and they give you like a stipends to live on, whether it's ten, twenty, fifty thousand dollars, you know, while you're helping your business. But who knows? Starbucks is even giving money out to start businesses. But man, people forget about that. They don't know where to look, and you go and Google, and you're not going to find all these kinds of things. So let me find these for you. I've been researching things. I like a, a discoverer. I love discovering these things and sharing it with people. So let me share them with you. You know, you have things to do in life, particularly when you start a business, even a freelancer. How are you going to pay for being a freelancer? I'll show you all the money and help that's available to do that. So you don't have to worry and don't have to pay high price consultants. Sure, I charge a fee for this, but it's very low compared to because I, I know so much knowledge about these things and where they are and what they're called and whatever. I'll find the offices and the phone numbers and the websites right in your town that will help you for free and you have to know about them <laughs> to be able to take advantage of them. you're not going to find them in google so let me find them for you <laughs> that's the important thing and i can i'll give you things that you never even thought about man <laughs> people don't know you know that this stuff is out there because they think it's for somebody else no it's for the people who know about it and the people applying for it you even get free help to fill out the applications man i'll, I'll show you stories even like on crowdfunding money where you could you know invest one hundred fifty thousand dollars. i mean not one hundred fifty thousand, just a hundred and fifty dollars and get over three hundred thousand dollars to start your business you know and, and enough to quit your job or how to take 20 cents you know, and, and work at an idea for, for six months and be able to quit your job. That's the kind of help that's available now in our society. But people don't know that they think it's for somebody else. There's some magic. There's no magic. They're just knowing about where it is. So let me show you where to go. I know it's there. Now I'll show you things you never even dreamed about.
Well, it seems that branding has become such an important part of life and really commercial life, right? <laughs> Selling things in this country. <laughs> and actually, uh, uh, I was called up there to give a speech at Harvard Business School on branding. You know, and I fell into it by accident. You know, uh, but now so many people, you know, talk to me about branding and what it is. And, and I certainly have, you know, passionate thoughts about it, but it is all by accident. And that's why I put together this video to share with you what I think about all this thing. And really, it's very important. I mean, me doing this is probably the most important thing I've done in my life. You know, uh, besides the lady I married <laughs> and the kids I got. But watch this. And, and I hope you get something out of it. Well, I think one of the neatest things that happened to me in life is wearing these question mark suits. Man, I've been doing it almost 15 years now, you know, and that's when life really changed. Man, I mean, <laughs> and it took so much courage to start to do this, you know. But now, man, I've given speeches, I've had Harvard Business School on branding, I get free upgrades on the airlines, pretty girls come up and talk to me for the first time in my life, you know, where were they? <laughs> 30 years ago would have mattered. You know? <laughs> or I gotta walk down the street, people smile at me. They just come up and just thank me for just wearing a suit or whatever. It seems to make people happy, you know. And, and I, I feel like now wearing this, I could go into the like the toughest biker bar at two o'clock in the morning and, and feel very comfortable. It seems to disarm people, makes people smile. People look at me and they smile down the street, whatever. But it took time and courage and a lot of failure to get here. And that's why you know, people you know, talk about branding and how, how do you find what you do in life and those kinds of important lessons in life. And, and I, I think there's no easy way to get there. But I want to tell you my story about how I got there, you know, and, and, and I hope maybe some of you can to relate to it or, or readjust your plans on what you think is right or wrong for you to do. We're all unique. You know, and that's what I didn't realize. You know, when I was growing up, man, yeah, <laughs> when I got out of college, uh, you know, God, I just wanted to be successful at something. I didn't know. Actually, I wanted to be an entrepreneur. I wanted to start a business. You know, and I failed at everything. I, I had an MBA in computers. You know, uh, back in the 70s, I had a software company that failed. I was failing all the time. You know, <laughs> and I was a lousy student most of my life. I was thrown out of schools, out of prep schools, thrown out of public high schools. And I wasn't malicious. <laughs> I was just, just a clown. You know, I was just bored as hell in most schools and things. I, I used to think my middle name was Sit Down because they say, Sit Down, let's go. Sit Down, let's go. You know? And I just couldn't wait to get out and learn how to feed myself. You know, that was the important thing because when I worked with somebody else all the time, man, after a couple months, I, I'd feel, <laughs> God, I thought the person was crazy or an idiot and wasn't doing it right. And I, I'd rather have my own thing, you know, and have people call me idiots and let them waste time, you know, behind my back or whatever it is. And, and, and it, it took a lot of stuff. And the stuff was, I had to get rid of everything that people told me to do. You know, I mean, that was it. I mean, I MBA. I mean, they taught me how to write, a, uh, to start a business. You know, <laughs> whatever. It is. And, and you get the power furniture, and you get the power business cards, and the, and the LLC, and the incorporations, and the experts, and the lawyers, and the accountants, and all that kind of stuff. And I was doing it like they all said. Yeah. <laughs> but then I went out of business. Yeah. <laughs> And after that, I did that twice. I looked around. I said, "Well, who won here?" You know, I didn't. Yeah. Uh, and I said, "The lawyer won." You know, the guy put the furniture for him, business cards, all these other things. You know, that people told me I had to have for success. You know, and pff, it didn't work. And my biggest fear in doing anything was failing. I used to think, boy, if I started a business with a fail, then I'd be walking down the street and everybody's like, hey, there goes let's go the failure. You know? And I didn't want to be that. And then when I failed two times, then I realized, wow, nobody cared. That's right. Superficially, maybe my brother-in-law made fun of me or something like that at the family picnic. But mainly nobody cared. We're all so involved in our own life. They don't care.
you know. But and that's when I got liberated because I, I, I saw that, boy, I was doing it like everybody told me to do in life and, and it wasn't working, you know. But more importantly, I wasn't having fun. I was working at something that really hard and putting all the time and energy, hoping that you know, in five years, ten years, I'll be a millionaire and whatever like that. But through that process, I wasn't having fun and I failed anyway. <laughs> so that's nuts, right? And that's why I said the third business I started, I said, well, this time I'm going to have fun, damn it. Because <laughs> the worst that can happen is I'll fail. <laughs> <laughs> and I've done that already, and that doesn't matter. But man, see, I don't have to wait for that expectation of having fun five years from now, ten years from now, thirty years from now, whatever. I start having fun every day. That's when it changed. That's when I started having fun. Because then when I was having fun, then I was unique. You know, people, you know, more attracted to me. And then I was trying to be, I was a consultant in Washington, D.C. or whatever, you know, helping Fortune 500 companies make more money. <laughs> and, 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 you know, people were doing that better than me, you know. And, and then I was, you know, but then I started having fun at it. And that's when it changes. That's when it attracts people. And that's sort of since then, sure, ups and downs and whatever, but that really changed everything. That's why I believe, you know, branding or whatever it is, it's fun. Like, how did, how did I come up with the question mark suit? This is me inside. This is me inside. That's what I found about having fun is all about. It's taking what's inside of you and bringing it out. What happens to most of us in life, we're, we're putting stuff that isn't us on top of us, you know, and expecting the people in the world to love that because we're so good at it. No, you're not. People are doing that better, who are more natural at it. To me, it seems that we have to find what's natural for us, so we can do that better than anybody else, right? And that's what, to me, branding is about, careers are about, all the things that we really want to do in life. It's not so much, you know, sure, we need data from outside, what's going on and, and, and what is uh, important in life, what's, what are the problems in life that we could help solve and things like that, but we have to do it our way. And that's what, to me, a brand is about or whatever, is something that is inside of you that makes you unique. What is special about you? And that's what this is. And, and that's why, see, we're all, we're all nuts. We're all crazy. We're all idiots. We're all strange <laughs> in some way. And to me, life is trying to find out what's that strange part about you yeah, that you can have and be unique about, you know, for people out there to, uh, you know, enjoy. You know, and you're then neat. Now, why do we need another something else already? And so many people try to do that. They sit down and think of a career and think of branding or, or whatever it is, and, and they're trying to copy what somebody else already did. Sure, maybe you could learn from that, but copying and trying to be somebody else is not you. And then, see, to me, as being successful is trying to give the rest of the world as much as you possibly can. You know, and we have no encouragement to do that. See, there's no encouragement to say, hey, you, you know, what's weird about you? That's what you should be selling. No, the experts come out and say, hey, you, this is what this guy over here who went to Harvard and is, is successful about and, and is a tight ass. <laughs> you should be like that, too. No, it's not that way, you know. And, and that's the important part of life is trying to understand that. And that's why failure is good. Man, because we don't know what works. The experts don't know what works. Nobody knows. You know, when we take this advice and we keep failing or whatever, then we get safer and safer because things aren't working for us. And it can't be that way. No, because then we can't give as much. I mean, just think if you love to get up every morning. You love to give what you want to give to life. You know? uh, wow. Then you're gonna work everybody, then you're gonna, you know, and even though if it doesn't make you a gazillion dollars, you're having fun already, right? You don't have to wait for retirement to have fun. <laughs> you're having fun already, you know? and, and that's what you need in life. I mean, that's the problem with traditional people. No one's going around now because they don't have time, like in school. In school, I thought my middle name was Sit Down. <laughs> 
You know, and, and, and I was a, that's why I got thrown out of so many schools and things like that. It seems like I mean, my last day, last class of my high school career, I was thrown out of class just for being a smart ass. You know? and, and I thought my middle name was Sit Down. I go, Sit Down, let's go, Sit Down, let's go. But those ants in my pants, man, <laughs> you know, which everybody hated, you know, the, the officials at school and everything, man, TV loved it. I made millions of dollars acting like that on TV because that was natural to me. You know, if I faked it or whatever, yeah, and it's not natural. You know, I was there trying to fake it again in life after my MBA and starting businesses and whatever. And, and wow, and that's why I believe the greatest thing for me to find out what was inside of me is through failure. Man, that's the only way. And so now in our society, what's going on? I mean, you can't trust experts. You know, we don't know what's going on. Your parents are lived in another generation. Things are changing so fast. Nobody knows you know, that you have to go out and find yourself. You know, and that's what it's all about. And, and it's knowing when to stop doing something that's not good for you. So you can find out the stuff that really is good for you. It's failing. It's like learning to walk. If you're going to do something new in life, it's like learning to walk. You know, and that's why I learned when I didn't have kids. So I was about 38, 39 or something like that. And, and, and watching my kid, you know, crawl on the floor and pick himself up on the coffee table and then take a step or two and fall on his butt. You know, and then he crawled back to the coffee table. See, now, if I was a good parent and wanted him to protect himself, I'd say, don't do that. Don't walk away from that, you know, safety, you know, grab on a, of a coffee table because you're going to fall. And that's what we do to grown-ups. Don't do that because you're going to fall. But the kid who walks away from the table and takes that first step and falls, he does that a hundred times, right? And that's why for us to take away that safety net, and fall. Oh, we're going to fall. People tell you it's going to fall. Your loved ones come sometimes are your worst enemy because they want to protect you. Oh, you're going to fall. And that's not going to happen. You know, you're not, I mean, your life is not going to grow because you're not going to learn what you really should do. That's why you can't learn to hit a baseball by sitting in a classroom and figuring out with a slide rule or spreadsheet or whatever they use nowadays. Now, you got to go out and swing and whiff it, you know, uh, lots of time before you ha know, learn how to do that. It's the same with our life. We have to go out and swing and whiff a zillion times until we learn the sweet spot, if there is one, and, and use our body, because we all have different body types and, and do things differently. And it's the same with branding. I mean, it's, it's digging inside of you, not trying to find out what's outside that you could put on you and not be natural. Because if you're natural at something, then it's not even a sale. Yeah, now sale, you know, if, if salesmen are phonies, right? Uh, but people who are passionate about what they want to do, that is really inside, it's a belief system somehow, and it's part of them, it's part of their makeup, it's part of their DNA or whatever, then that's not sales, that's just emoting, you know, the real you. You know, and that's what's important in life. And to me, that's, that's how to choose a brand, not trying to fake it. What do people want to hear? I'll be that, you know, and things like that. It's the woman dressing up, you know, to be like your fantasy or something like that. And she's just a real lady, you know. And if you don't realize that, you know, you're not going to be there long once the fantasy runs out, right? And that's the same way I think if you're providing a product or service, is trying to emote the real you something that is real unique about you and see that's it it's finding out what's special about you so that you could show that to other people this is me you know and this is what's special about me you want this special stuff okay come here and get it if you don't i understand we we can't match up to everybody see most people want to appeal to everybody you can't you know and now it doesn't matter you know, before it mattered more because you used to have, you want your product in Walmart and Walmart wanted to appeal to everybody, so you had the lowest common denominator and do that. Now, you don't need a bazillion customers. You know, on the internet, you need a couple hundred and you'll have a nice living. So that's why people, there'll be people there like that. Same way with you as a personality finding me. You have to find the people who like what you are, not what you're pretending to be because that's going to go away. You know, so that's what uh, branding to me it is, or, uh, uh, or even your career choices, is choosing something that what you are, so it's natural to you, you can do it better than anybody else. That means you're going to grow better than anybody else. That way, you know, your career and make more people happy. You can't make everybody happy anyway. But the people who enjoy your authenticity 
will get the most out of it. If they don't enjoy that, then yeah, they should go somewhere else anyway, because you'll never even you'll never begin to please them anyway. So I mean, that's what in choosing a brand, it's all that. But it's so easy to get caught up in, in what the experts say, and because I mean, that's that's the problem. I think what, what ruins everything are the experts. They're telling you what works and things like that, and eh, so sort of, it's it's maybe okay to listen because you don't want to be completely dumb. But don't bet, bet your farm on it because they're wrong most of the time. But they can't admit they're wrong. See, in our society, at least where I live in Washington, D.C., if you admit you're a guest and don't know, you can't charge a lot of money, right? <laughs> so that's why experts have to make you believe, oh, I know exactly what to do. You do this uh, thing and you're going to make a zillion dollars doing this. They don't know. They can't know. If they did really know, they'd be doing it, right? And they're not selling you to do it. So they're guessing, like the rest of us. But because the rest of us are guessing too, we're insecure. You know, they have to pretend they're not. So you say, hey, yeah, this guy's not smart. I'll do it. And I'll give him money or whatever. And then it doesn't work. And, you know, but they have the money. Yeah. And then so they'll find somebody else. Yeah. And that's the problem with experts. And then now, and it's coming true more and more nowadays because we are now doubling in information. Okay. The amount of knowledge in our world now doubles like every 13 months. When I was born, about 1945, or actually 43, <laughs> it doubled about every 25 years. So just in the span of my lifetime, knowledge went from doubling every 25 years to doubling every 13 months. So just over a year. 25 years to one year. So that means the amount of knowledge. That's why you Google everything. You, you, you're going to get you know, a million websites, a billion websites. It's nothing. So... What are you going to see when you Google that? You're going to see millions of websites, and most of those websites are people who want to sell you something, right? <laughs> and that's why you're looking for an answer. So all the people want to give you answers. The people want to charge you money. You know, so they're not going to tell you they don't know. They're not going to tell you they're unsure. You know, and these are my best guesses, and you want to work with me on that. Maybe, you know, help you find out what your answer is to the problem, not what my answer is, because I think we're all so different. To that but we want because we don't we're insecure we all are we don't really know because to ourselves it's hard to lie so we know we don't know so somebody comes up and says hey, I, I, I know the answer give me money yeah and you know nine times out of ten it won't work actually it's two out of three times it's not gonna work and that's the day if you go now and Google uh, scientific journals wrong you'll see studies that are done by very uh, you know, important people that show all the scientific journals, the articles are right in the, you know, the uh, New England Journal of Medicine and those kind of the, you know, the, the biggest journals in the world. The, the results of all those studies are wrong within three years. They can't be duplicated or they're proven wrong or whatever. But we see a study in the headline of the newspaper, oh wow, that's the answer. I'm going to go out and change my life on that. No. See, and so you, you, you can't even trust that anymore. That's right, to me, it's going inside more for your career or whatever. Because see, everything in life is a pain in the ass. You know, life is not easy, I feel. You have to struggle at it every day, you know. And relationships are that way. So a relationship with your, your work, your professional life, or finding anything, you know, to do that you want to do in life is that. It's going to be hard. So that's why if you don't look inside yourself, so the brand you're looking for, you know, it isn't really authentic to you, you'll change it because it's so quickly or want to change it because you can't, it's not working or whatever. But if you dig down, and find something that is authentic for you, then you'll have the perseverance to stay there long enough to figure it out. You know, and that's another thing about doing things you really want to do in life. You know, uh, or choosing a career or whatever. You know, that you'll hang in there because it's it's tough. It's always going to be tough, and you're going to quit if you're looking. Oh, I'm going to make a hundred thousand dollars this year and uh, doing this, and you make ten. So you're out of there. You're not going to figure it out. Yeah. But no, you say, I want to do this, and I will do most anything. I'll find another way to make some money while I figure it out, you know, to do this in life, because this is where I can contribute the most to everybody else's life. And to me, you don't have much else, you know, offering to you. Nobody else is offering. All, all the other big jobs and big companies, it's f hard to find uh, secure jobs, right? 
Uh, everybody's firing, and you know they make money by firing people, not by hiring people. Benefits aren't there anymore, and things like that. It's insecure. Um, so it's I don't know why more more people don't start their own thing. It's easier now because of platforms to do something. I mean, if you want to be even have part-time job that makes extra money, you go on platforms and do this, and they handle. You don't have to put an ad in, you know, on, on, post it on the mailboxes or whatever that you do this and figure out how to collect the money, the insurance, and all this. You know, these websites now do all that for you. And, and you don't have to worry about collecting money, uh, you know, paying taxes, or you have to pay taxes, definitely. Uh, but all the other nonsense in starting a business or becoming a freelancer is all taken care of by these platforms that are out there. So now it's easier in life now to do these kinds of things. But that's what I, said. I think people is, you, know, you have to really get in your mindset to fail because if you don't have that say like I've written a hundred books you know, and and only ten have made money so I know in the best thing I can do in life I'm wrong 90% of the time wow you know so I think that's what life is like all of us otherwise you're gonna be in some vanilla life you know letting people tell you what to do because they want to do it and look at the experts they told us how to run the stock market you know until 2008 the smartest people in the world right went to the stock market and crashed the whole world now right look at what's going on now nobody knows who how many people a year ago you know from this state said that you know, Donald Trump was going to be the Republican presidential candidate no but he shows what life is about nowadays. <laughs> you need no experience, <laughs> right? <laughs> you need no credentials, you know? And he, he did it in the beginning with no money, just went out and did it, you know? And that's why it is so different. You know, the people in England who said, let's get out of the European Union, and the guy who set it up, he's out of a job now because he thought he would win and everybody wanted to stay in there. No, nobody knows. The smartest people in the world know, know what's going on. That's why, to me, you might as well trust yourself first because that's the person you're going to learn the most from. Somebody else, if they do it wrong, wrong you're going to just blame that idiot. Man, you know, I knew he was stupid. You know? And you're going to fail anyway. But if it's your idea, if it's your thought, you're going to work on that harder than anybody else. See? And then you're going to get more out of it because all you have to do is learn to fail. When you go out and hit a, uh, try to hit a fastball or a curveball, and you, boy, you know, when until you see that drop and you wonder that's magic, you know, you're never going to learn how to hit it. And that's why you have to want to be there hitting that ball. You have to want. So it, it has to be your idea that fails, so you get the most out of it. That's why it's a win-win. If you're having fun doing what you want to do in life, you're winning right away. You're getting up every morning, just can't wait to do it. Sure, it's frustrating because you don't, you know, you're not successful at it all the time. None of us are, you know. Uh, but the failures, you don't have to blame on some idiot. You know, that's why when I was doing books in the beginning, I was publishing with people in New York, and, and they were, uh, you know, if a book would fail. I just play always the publicity's fault. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. And I wasted all that energy blaming somebody else. Yeah. And life doesn't have to be that way if we take responsibility for it. And that's why if you're doing what you really want to do or trying to get there, you can't flick a switch and just be at the one thing that you want to do. Yeah. You have to crawl there. It's a series of things because you don't know. You're inventing it. We're all inventing our lives. You know, to me, what's the most important thing is to know what it isn't. So if it isn't where you are now, if it isn't what you're doing now, if it isn't how you're presenting yourself now, then it's slowly trying to get somewhere else. Don't stay where it is because you know that's wrong. But we get so comfortable. Oh, yeah, this is cozy, even though it's miserable every day. <laughs> There's something comforting about it. And then if you don't know exactly where you want to do, it's easy to stay there. Oh, she only beats me on the weekends. I guess it's not so bad. <laughs> no, you got to get out of there. And if you can't, you got to start planning how you're going to do it. Yeah. 
That's the only way to grow. And I think that's a, you know, about life. Like, I'm 72 now, man. I, I feel like 20, 30 more years maybe to do this. And, man, that's why I think retirement is stupid. Man, why do you want to sit around and do nothing? Having an easy job is stupid. Man, why do you want to do nothing? Have it easy. I mean, to me, you want to go out and play basketball against a five-year-old? That's easy. And you win all the time. But that's not life. That's not growing. That's not contributing. You know? That's what we're here to do, I think, is to contribute to somebody else. Yeah. <laughs> Help them with their lives and give the best we have. Give the best what's inside of us to the rest of the world. And how are you going to do that? You got to dig in and start you know, doing some excavation yourself on the inside, what's in there, so you can bring it out and other people can know a lot of it. Yeah. See, that's why the question marks too. I mean, see, a lot of people think I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> They're probably right. <laughs> and I am at times. But I know if people come up to me and they like this, I'm going to like them. Because this is me inside. And if you like this, this is what I really am. And then I know I could be natural and please you. Yeah. I mean, when I used to dress up in $500 Armani suits or whatever the hell they were at the time, you know, I'd, you know all these fat cats or, you know, with, you know, with my clients and everything. And I, I didn't really feel comfortable with any of them. But now, dressing like a clown, I... <laughs> <laughs> I attract people like that. And those, those fat cat stuffy people, they don't come near me. That's just wonderful. We're saving each other lots of time. And I'm having a ball. <laughs> and that's what it's about. So, I mean, remember that. I mean, all this stuff, it, it, life is fun, but you have to make it fun. Most people are going to take the fun out of it for you. Or, or, or just give you a medication to help you get through the day. No. You want to strive through the day. You want to grow through the day. You know, and that's the fun part of life. And that's, I think, the, the way to keep on giving. And actually, as you get older, man, I think it's the one thing I could do better is love. See, I can love harder now at this age than I can at any more age. Yeah. I can't run as fast. I can't hit a ball as fast or anything like that. But I can love harder. <laughs> and that's what's neat about aging. Man, you can love harder than other people. And that's the joy of life. And, and when you're chasing money and uh, chasing sex and all that, you forget about that stuff. And that's what's the neat part of life to remember. And that's why, to me, life just gets better every year. Well, Tony Bacigalup, see a Bacigalupo, right? I'll, I'll give you a quick Italian lesson. Okay. Bacci is kiss and lupo is wolf. Ah, Bacigalupo. There you go. Tony, but who cares about that? We want nwc.co, right? And co is like in co-working space. And you're the guy who seven, what, seven, eight, nine, ten years ago started almost this whole movement single-handedly because you hated working at home, you hated working in offices, and you wanted to hip young people around you when you went to work every day. So you just created your own space in New York, didn't you? <laughs> That is pretty much, that's mostly true, I, but I've never heard it explained. Really? Yeah, I see. On your well, see, what I used to, I lived for making one minute commercials. That's how, everything my life was. How could I say that in one minute, you know, and get somebody to ring the phone, yeah? Wow. So my main, main. You're doing great. <laughs> now we got to blow the next seven, so. <laughs> But really, you had one of the neatest co-working spaces in New York. Now you're in Co Colorado, and you have like a, a, a group that helps people create co-working spaces. Because if I want to be a freelancer, now I'm in the suburbs of Washington, D.C. or whatever, and man, I hate looking in these boring suburbs, you know, in a house all alone, and everybody else in the house is working all day, and what the hell do I do? Do I go to Starbucks? You know, maybe. But, but you created something better, didn't you? Yeah, well, that's the thing about co-working, right, is that working inside of a traditional office, um, you know, a lot of people were done with that a long time ago, uh, and now more and more people are working from home. Uh, but the more you work from home, the more you realize that, you know, you want to be able to get out, yeah. you want to be around other people, you want to be able to feel a sense of belonging to something bigger than yourself. And so the more and more of us are able to work from wherever we want on our laptops, 
the more we're getting together and forming new kinds of communities and, uh, and just finding new ways to kind of work together and co-working gives us that way to do it. But, so, but I think it, it's more, it's like having a soulmate that's experiencing the same problems you are. Man, where am I going to get my business today? You know, how the hell do I fill out this form? You know, all this kind of shit that your wife maybe has no idea what you're talking about because she's going down and working for some big conglomerate <laughs> where the staff takes care of that. But, uh, you know, and, and, and this movement is amazingly diverse, and that's what's great about it, uh -huh. that the whole family can get in on this. But, yes, right, being able to talk to your neighbor and just, you know, ask people about what's going on. Yeah. And right now, you know, more and more people are working for themselves, and there are so many unanswered questions about that. Like, well, you know, like working in a traditional job can feel oppressive. Yeah. It's nice to know that everything's taken care of for you. You know, you show up, you do your job, you get paid, done, right? When you work for yourself, you have to manage all yeah. that by yourself, and that can be really hard. And so if you're in a community where you're around other people who have been through those kinds of challenges before, it's a lot easier to know, well, hey, you know, if I have a problem, I don't, I'm not stuck in my yeah. house trying to figure it out. I'm around other people who can help me. But more than that, I mean, you're talking about, you know, you're, you're, if you're working in a place that everything's taken care of, doesn't that sound like jail? You get three meals and a <laughs> place to sleep, you know, and you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> and you're not growing. <laughs> you're not growing. And that's what life's about. How are you going to grow as much as you can, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I, well, you know what? There are, there are lots of people who have jobs they love and they have a great relationship with their work, but there are an awful lot of people yeah. who don't have a good relationship with their work, and I think we can do better. I think that we as a society, we're in a place where traditional employment is changing. You're not you're seeing less and less, you know, those traditional jobs, yeah. and that's giving us an opportunity yeah. to actually decide that we're going to make uh, a relationship with our work that's ours, that it's not, you know, someone is deciding our fate for us. We're going to decide what our work is and what our relationship to that is. And I think that's a great opportunity because, uh, you know, too many people spend too many years of their lives on uh, working. No. I don't want to see that continue. Yeah, it makes no sense to me. And also, I mean, if you find something you love to do in life, you don't have to retire. <laughs> Why well, retire? Man, I was thinking, you know, when I was younger, I said, oh, I'll retire and play golf. Well, I play shitty golf. Why do I want to retire and do something that's shitty? <laughs> I'm, no, I'm mediocre. At, now, I love making a fool out of myself on TV, and I can keep doing that till I die. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you know, and if we can associate our work with our realization of uh -huh. potential as people, and it's something that we care about, and it doesn't, you know, like, it doesn't always have to be do what you love. Like it, it yeah. doesn't have to be fun. But if you can connect what what you value in life and and what's rewarding to you to your work and to say, yeah. you know, I exist on this planet right. to be a positive influence on the people around me and to do good in this world, and that's a relationship mm -hmm. with work. Then let's all do yeah. that for as long as we're able to do anything. Well, I think the big organizations are pushing more people to do that. You know, there'd be, I mean, 30 years ago, you could retire with a watch and a f pension and all that kind of stuff, you know, so people stayed. Now you can't anymore. <laughs> That's going away. Yeah. So it's safer almost to be by yourself because that way, if you're a consultant and have five clients, that's better than one boss who doesn't come in one day and decide they don't like you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, well, and I think that's evolving a lot as time goes by, but, uh, you know, certainly we're in a place now where that traditional, yeah. you know, work 30 years and retire with a pension thing, that model is not so, you know, reliable anymore, yeah. and we're building new models now, and like yeah. you said, you know, having a diverse client base, having mm -hmm. a business, having, you know, a, an interdependent support system around you, um, is certainly, you know, opening up lots of exciting new possibilities. And I think there are a lot of open questions, right? <laughs> <laughs> lots of questions. <laughs> what talks about, we talked about something yeah. is that, you know, having a, a new kind of a safety net for yeah. the workforce. And um, I think that that's an ongoing conversation, but there's, there's a lot of potential there. And, I, and I'm excited for where it's headed. No, I am too. Because it seems that 
to me, the most valuable resource we have is people. And if people are going out every day and not enjoying what they're doing, then we're not getting the best out of those people uh, as a society. So it, it, like, if you have fun playing football, you're going to work as hard as you can at it. If you hate it, then you wish the coach never picks you to have to go in. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's what we have mostly in the workforce. <laughs> people that want to be there. So then you and I have to deal with them when we deal with that organization, all these people don't want to be there. You know, like Comcast, you call up and they're miserable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, and I think, you know, somebody said this when, uh, after the 2008 crisis, uh, when you, there was a lot of unemployment, and I think there is, there is some, to some degree some permanent unemployment yeah. because it's going to be up to us to make our own employment. But they said, you know, there's no shortage of work. Yes. The issue is that the work isn't being handed out tidy yes. in the form of traditional jobs. Yeah. But there is a lot of work to be done out there because there's, a, there's a lot of suffering. There's a Absolutely. lot of, you know, just education to be done. There's a lot of, you know, big earth shatter right. problems to be solved. <laughs> and, you know, I think that a lot of us care about solving a lot of those things and doing a lot of that work. But it's up to us to go right. to now. It's like you did when you saw, hey, why isn't there co-working space? And you went and created it. You went on Kickstarter and raised $18,000 to do it and had no idea how to do that either, did you? <laughs> yeah, no one hired me to do it. <laughs> exactly. I Just myself. figured it out. Yeah. I, and I put myself out there and from the heart because right? mm -hmm. I didn't know what I was doing, but I knew that I had to do it. And when I put that out there yes. and I just shared with people what I believed and what I mm -hmm. cared about, people responded to that absolutely they, they were attracted to it and they yeah. wanted to help me and they wanted to participate and that all just really started to to, to create yeah. positive energy and so the more that you know you who's watching this you know the more you can tap into that yeah. yourself the more good it's going to be absolutely well as i get older what i realize is we go to school on time to develop our brain and be smart and everything and then when i got older i said shit my heart's smarter than my brain you know <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Why aren't we developing that? Like picking a loved one, you know. Well, I want someone six feet tall and in his broad shoulders and all. That. You know, some midget will come in the room and you fall in love and you can't do anything about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fell madly in love with a beautiful woman who lived sixteen hundred miles away. I, right. Makes no sense. <laughs> yeah. And so, why isn't our work life the same way? That trusts our heart more on on what we yeah. do. Yeah, and that's the way to live. And so many of these organizations, we spend a you know, eight hours a day around people who don't love us at all. Yeah. <laughs> that must be toxic in itself. But to actually solve that problem, we find you, and it's nwc.co, not com, but co. NWC stands for New Network Cities, and that's what you're all about, creating this so people can eh, grow better, I think, is really the bottom line in all this. And you got to, if you're a plant and growing in society, you got to find the right pot to be in. <laughs> Absolutely. And so let's, let's build better gardens. For right. <laughs> right. <laughs> what do this, you know, to, to people watching, you know, if you're, if you're working from home, if you're working for yourself, if you're thinking about it, odds are there is a co-working yeah. community near to you where you can go and be around these kinds of Absolutely. people exposed to this world. And, and check it out. You know, yeah. Try it out. Meet the people. Get a feel for it. And if you don't find a community that really vibes with you, start one. Yeah. It's really easy. You can go to meetup.com, start yes. a community. You can do it online. And you don't need to rent a space. You can right. use cafes. You can use public spaces. Um, start a community. Find people who you resonate with right. and, and just get out there and, and bring people together and I promise it will be super fulfilling to you and it'll help put you in a better direction. Wonderful. That's, a, that's using technology instead of having it use you, right? <laughs> Hi, join me on Tuesdays and I'm doing free Let's Go tutoring. That's right. Give me 10 minutes of your time for free and I'll show you free sources of money and help to get your project, your idea, or your financial problems solved. Actually, I'm doing it on, on, on a website called officehours.io you know and if you search Matthew Lesko there you know and sign up you know for my Tuesday sessions and really see if <laughs> try to make it because these are free
free and, and you're taking time from somebody else who would you know sign up but you took their spot so you know we have people that don't show sometimes and, and, that, and that hurts a bit so make sure you can show before you sign up for one of these things and it's every Tuesday and I've got a bunch of slots there you know that will do because this is the way I learn too uh, I don't even know what I know and so it's fun to try to help people I mean like recently I had somebody was looking for five thousand dollars so they could do a trailer for their new movie they wanted to make yeah you know, or another guy who, who wanted to write a business plan for how to start a, a, a internet marketing company and how to get that done for free or how about money to live on while he started a, a real estate business or somebody who I helped who was trying to find out how to get customers for his consulting business and not spend any money on it so, <laughs> so we have fun there's only 10 minutes of your time my time and I'll give you the best sources in the world I just want to make sure that people know there's help out there for free if you know where to look.